So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Okay. Okay. Okay, so acidity is okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so now let's shift to uh, a topic that may seem much more like real ochem. And that is isomers. Okay. So do you remember what an isomer is? That sounds good, but I want the, and this isn't just to be for ease of teaching. This is, you don't want that going to the exam. Not for isomers. Because that's correct, but it's not correct. Because, and they will test that. What is actually an isomer? Or just same formula. If two guys have the same formula, they are isomers. So we start with that, same formula. What will become confusing as we go on with this lesson is I'm going to assume that whatever we talked about and we agreed to put aside, we're not talking about anymore. And I will assume that if we talk, so for example, if I just do a random question here and you're like, what the hell, that makes no sense because HCl is different from NaOH. That won't apply because from now on, we're only going to be talking about isomers. So it's going to layer up. So from now on, for the rest of this discussion, until we're done with this part of the lesson, everything we, we will talk about will be an isomer, which means everything we talk about has what? Same. The same formula. So class number one, which is the easiest. Look at this sucker. And look at this sucker. They have the same formula. What are they? Isomers. They're isomers. However, just looking at them, do you agree they're connected different ways? Yes. You can even do it in words. Every carbon here is either touching one other carbon or at most two other carbons. But a carbon here touches what? I mean, that's definitely a structural difference. So if you think about how something's structured, for example, your health, the way your health is put together or pieced together, you call someone's health like their constitution. If you think about a voting constituency, you're talking about the voting body and how it's made up, same thing. So literally, these are built up differently. They are constituted differently. So these are called what? Constitutional isomers. These are the easiest, but you should know them. They're the easiest because you could just see they're completely different. Okay? Same formula, different guys. So what I was saying before, from now on, we will assume that everything we're talking about is non-constitutional. Okay? So we have guys with the same formula, that's a check. We have guys with the same formula that are hooked up differently. That's a real thing, constitutional isomers, but we will never talk about them again. They're now off to the side. So for number two and on, everything we will talk about has the same formula, and everything we'll talk about is connected how? The same way. Okay, so we okay with this? Okay, so let's start that, number two. Number two is kind of a jip. It makes you think that all this is kind of BS. Because in number two, you can, you can honestly picture them as being the same guy. There's no difference. But because you have different energetic states and you value one state over another, you can kind of picture them as different guys. That's what they do, so that's what we'll do. Okay? So what is number two? Number two starts from an example like this. I'm going to try to draw this on a slant. By the way, you know how lazy I am. At the ends, you have only hydrogens. Is that okay? Can I leave the hydrogens out? Okay, so I have this guy. But this single bond here is made by a sigma bond. Sigma bonds are end to end. And because they're end to end, they can freely rotate. So what ends up happening is even though they're, they're the same formula, they're connected the same way, physically in space, they can kind of rotate around. It kind of sucks to study it this way. Because it's hard for me to draw this picture. It's even harder for you to read it, right? So I think the best way to do it is just look, since this is the axis they're going to rotate around, look down that axis. You know how this is done. You draw this guy. This is right here. This is more guy right here, right? But you're looking right down this line. So you can't see the carbon behind. So we represent that with a circle. That's the carbon that's behind. You're looking straight down this line. You see this carbon right in front, and the circle represents the guy in back. But doesn't this guy also have three prongs? So you would see that. So can I draw it like this? Okay. Now if I drew everything in correctly, it would look, you know what? This is so stupid of me. Why don't we just use color? We have color, right? I mean, that's what this is for. It's not so I can just sit here and draw pretty pictures and smile, right? Can I use it for something? So does everybody agree we would have a projection that looks like this? I don't know if we need to memorize the name, but people already said it. So what is this? Newman this is a Newman projection. Is it one N or two? Is it Newman like this or yeah. two Ns? It's one. It's one. Okay. Bless you. Okay. Now the thing is, you're allowed to rotate. And you can rotate with the hydrogens to literally stack on top of each other or they have room. And the tradition is that because they're energetically different, we think of them as a sort of isomer type. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. Okay. 
Now, for this first thing, do you need to draw this? Uh, you can if you want. I'm going to try to be super efficient. So can I just leave out the hydrogens? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like this. We start like this. Sorry. I am going to note one guy up here is being distinguished. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to draw this like this, and draw this guy like that. Okay? Okay, so I don't know yet, but we'll do it. Do you agree here that literally all the hydrogens are against each other? All those hydrogens with their electrons are right on top of one another. Is that good or bad? It's bad because electrons don't like to be near one another. But they can't pull out this way. They can, but it's kind of hard. But because of that nice sigma bond, they can start to rotate to get away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this hydrogen pinned in back. Wait, green. And I'm going to stop drawing in pink in a second, whatever. And I'm going to rotate these guys over so they have space. Do they have to land precisely here? No, but it's easy to talk about this. Do you agree that we can look at a situation that looks like this? Do they have more room or less room? So I think this is energetically better. Right, Green? We should make up some terms. Do you need to write these terms down? I don't think so. But they will frame the discussion. So instead of saying that picture, that picture, I'm going to start to name them. This is called zero degree. What do you call it when two things are on top of each other? You want to look at the sun, but the moon's in the way. An eclipse. So this is zero degrees eclipsed. Okay? I rotate this guy. Well, a third of the way would be 120. Half of 120 is 60. This is 60 degrees, but now everybody has room. In an auditorium, we have the seating set up so that you can see between the gaps. What's that called? Staggered. Staggered. No, no, that's a beat you with a stick. Almost, Agnes. You know that, OK? That's the next round. Doesn't exist in this round. But I do this on, on purpose, though, to bait people that want to say that, which is good. Nothing. But if you do say that, and then you're like corrected on that, then you're more likely to listen to what's coming up. OK? OK. Um, is it okay if I not, don't draw the pink anymore? Is that okay? Yeah. Just to save time. So you have this H up here. Now you have something like this. And now you have this guy. Can you tell me what this would be? This would be 120 degrees eclipsed. Okay, let's keep going. By the way, you don't have to go. You can come back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Any time, number of times, right? I'm going to draw this again. Here's the H up here. Uh, here's this guy again. What would this be called? 180 degrees staggered. Nope, would not be anti, but that's better. In fact, I mean, you're a smart guy, so of course I'm not going to embarrass anyone on purpose. But if you feel embarrassed, that's even better. Feel more embarrassed. Okay. It's, no, feel really embarrassed. It's not anti. You should know better. The more embarrassed you feel, the better off you're going to be. Because then you won't forget it. Right? I mean, you're all smart. You can look this up in a book. So, okay, so the point is, don't forget this. So we go here. What is this guy? This is two, I forgot, 40? 240 degrees eclipse. Okay. And then, like this. Okay, then we go to this thing. Well, what is this thing? This is all the way around, but now you're over here. This is apparently what? 300 degrees staggered. And now you go back over. Of course, you don't have to go around in a circle like this. You can go here and here, here and back to here, whatever. What about in terms of energy? How many different energetic states do you have? Two. Two. Because all the eclipse guys look what? The same. And all the what? Stagger, Stagger guys look the same. So do you agree that energetically, they're really only um, two different things, right? Now you could say there are three low energy conformational isomers. Or you could say energetically, you either have eclipse or what? Stagger. Stagger. Do we understand the idea? Mm -hmm. OK. As this thing is spinning around, where do you think it will spend more of its time? In the stagger configuration or eclipsed? Stagger. And that is it. You can kind of think of, and it's really more of a battle between good state versus bad state. Is everybody okay with this? That is all I wanted you to get. Done. You know it's more time in stagger? More time in stagger because it's lower energy. So it's like you have a ball bearing going up and down hills. When it gets to the bottom of the hill, it rests there a little bit. That's the stagger. But sometimes it gets a push and it comes what? Out. When it gets to the top, does it stay there for a long time? No, it just rolls downhill again and it kind of sits in that valley. So these valleys are the staggered guys. Okay? Okay. Can I send this away? Do it again. Now this might be worth writing down. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to do exactly the same thing in exactly the same way. The only difference is instead of putting a hydrogen here, I'm going to put a methyl group. And here, I'm going to put another methyl group. So everywhere we see this, If we weren't behind, I would redraw it. That's what I typically do. I redraw everything. But because we are slightly behind, I mean, I'll give you time. Do it. 
Okay? I'll draw the, the pink eyes really slowly, if that helps. So like slowly, like, yay, slowly. <laughs> Okay, so something. We could go ahead and finish conformational isomers. The last thing is um, heat to combustion, and then we'll be done with it. Or you can go ahead and go to break now, and then we'll come back. Break. Break. You know? Okay, let's go to break. <laughs>